Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Some of you probably know that I've been recording a comprehensive set of training videos for Lightroom Classic. It's really been a marathon project. I started it almost two years ago, then I was forced to stop when my son became sick, and then months later when he became better and I returned to the project, I found that I had to re-record most of them because Adobe decided to change Lightroom over that time. Then once I was done with those re-recordings, I found that I had to do some of them over again because Adobe changed the masking in Lightroom. Then when I was looking at the series, it didn't really look cohesive because Lightroom for some of the videos was an older version of Lightroom. And then for some of the other videos, it was the current version of Lightroom. So I decided to re-record all of them. Well, I'm happy to say that I'm just about done with the recordings and I've been working on the PDFs. Each of the videos comes with a PDF and I've gathered together all the raw files. So anyone who purchases the course will be able to watch all the videos with a PDF to help them remember what I go over in the video and they'll have the files to work along at home. But I digress. Recently, I was recording one of the videos and it had to do with the basic tab in Lightroom and all the different things and different ways you could work the basic tab. And one of the things in the video I talk about is white balance. And it kind of occurred to me that I've never really done, at least not recently, a video talking about how to properly adjust the white balance on an image. And there's actually a few different ways you could do it in Lightroom. So in today's video, I want to just give you some tips on adjusting white balance. Now you can see uh, we're going to be working on this image and uh, this was taken several years ago. I used to own a Fujifilm X-T1 and I used to like to use uh, the camera Velvia um, film simulation mode that was in the camera. In Lightroom it's called a camera profile. Um, unfortunately at times, it didn't do it all the time, Sometimes when using that film simulation mode, the image was really blue. And you can see how this image is very blue. So the white balance is way off. So I need to adjust the white balance. Now, the most obvious way to go about doing it is to just use the slider. As you can see, there's a temp and tint slider. And if you look at the temp slider specifically, you can see as shot, it's showing 5,000. What is that 5,000? Well, it's Kelvin temperature. Um, those of you familiar maybe with studio lighting know that a lot of studio lights, they'll even, even on camera flash, it will have a Kelvin temperature um, for the temperature of the light. And daylight is usually somewhere around 5,000, sometimes 5,500. So this is the Kelvin temperature uh, setting for this image. The throw on this slider, it goes from 2,000 to 50,000. So it has a large throw. Uh, the tint slider, on the other hand, you could see that it has a throw of minus 150 to plus 250, or plus 150, I'm sorry, minus 150 to plus 150. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because if you're working on anything other than a raw file, these sliders are different. So if I go to the same exact image, but it's a JPEG version of the image, you'll notice that the temp slider now is from plus 100 to minus 100, and the same thing from the tint slider. It's plus 100 to minus 100. So the sliders are different. They're not in Kelvin temperature anymore. At least the temp slider isn't in Kelvin temperature anymore. It's just an adjustment like any other slider in Lightroom, kind of an arbitrary adjustment value from minus 100 to plus 100. The reason why I bring this up is because it's sometimes more difficult to get an exact adjustment on an image, a white balanced image, it's sometimes harder to get a white balance adjustment on a non-raw image because the throw of the slider is less. You're only going from minus 100 to plus 100 on, in this case, a JPEG, and it'd be the same thing on a TIFF, PSD, or any other file type, except raw file. Raw file, you have a throw on the slider from 2,000 to 50,000, so it's easy, easier, it could be easier to dial in the correct temperature. With that said, it's still rather difficult with the slider, especially when it has such a large throw because you could just start to move it and you can see I'm just barely moving it and it already jumped from 5,000 to 5,217. And if I just barely move it, you could see how it's just kind of eking along. Well, there's a couple things you could do to kind of help you adjust the slider. 
Uh, one thing you could do is if you just hover over any slider in Lightroom and you could see how it kind of highlights that slider. What you could use then use is the up and down arrow keys. If I click the up arrow key, you could see how it's going up to 5050. If I click it or tap that up arrow key again, you see it's 5100. So it's moving in units of 50. And if I hit the down arrow key, it's going down in units of 50. Now, if you want to go a larger amount, you could hold the shift key in and then tap the up arrow key. And you could see it's going in units of 200. And similarly with the down arrow key, it goes in units of 200. But if you want to be a little more precise and go in a smaller amount, hold in the alter option key. Holding in the alt option key and clicking the up arrow key, you could see it's just going in units of five. So this is a lot finer of an adjustment. You could see that. And the same thing for the tint. If I hover over tint and hold in the alt option key, you could see how it goes in units of seven, it seems to be, or, or no, I'm sorry, units of one. So it's going to units of one. And if I don't hold in that alt option key, it's going in units of five. If I hold the shift key in, it goes in units of 20. So you get an idea how you could use the arrow keys in conjunction with that alt option key to get a finer adjustment. Another thing you could do because, you know, the actual length of the slider has to do with the slight movements you're doing. You could pull this panel out more by just going in between the panel in the middle uh, area and you'll get this kind of double arrow thing and you could pull it out and you could get a longer throw on the slider. If you really want to get fancy, hold in that alt option key and then come in here and you could drag it way out. So you could drag this way out and then you'll have a really large throw on the slider. So you could do it that way if you feel like you're having a hard time dialing it in exactly where you need it to be. Now, that's one way and probably, um, tell you the truth, it's probably a common way if you just need to get a general adjustment, but to get a more precise adjustment, you're not going to do it that way. Another way you could do things is you could go to this drop down and you could see here we have as shot, we have auto. As shot's going to be whatever your camera was set at. Auto is you're letting Lightroom automatically adjust the white balance. You can see what that is. By the way, here's as shot. Uh, you could come in and then just use uh, specific like preset color temperatures for daylight. You see daylight's 5,500. You could go to cloudy, 6,500. You could go to shade, 7,500, and so on. So you could go on and try these. Um, now, I want to point out that this is for a raw file. If you're, again, not on a raw file, that dropdown will not have all those different uh, kind of presets. Instead, you just have as shot, auto, and custom. So that's it. That's all you'll have here on anything other than a raw file. That's, again, why it's usually a little easier to dial in white balance on a raw file compared to other file types. So you could use that drop down. Now, the way that I do it most often, I think most probably photographers, at least more experienced photographers do it, is they use the eyedropper. There's a little trick to using the eyedropper, though. Let's turn on the eyedropper, and you can see then the cursor turns into this eyedropper. Now you can see there's this little grid pattern right near the eyedropper called pick a target neutral. First of all, if you're not seeing that, go down here to this toolbar. This toolbar is this little strip of real estate that's directly below the image. If you don't see the toolbar, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key turns the toolbar off and on. And then over here, you want to make sure that show loop is checked. Also, I would uncheck auto dismiss. Because typically, you're not going to just click once and get a perfect white balance. You're going to click around until you find the perfect white balance. So if I have this check, box, or check mark checked and auto dismiss and I click once, you can see how it goes away and I have to go back over here and grab the tool again. And again, it just keeps doing that. Well, if I um, go and get the tool again and then go over here and uncheck that box, I get click around all I want. And the tool stays active till I put it away. So that's what I definitely recommend is that you uncheck that box. All right, now back to this eyedropper tool. So we have the loop showing and we have it set so it doesn't auto dismiss. Now look at the bottom of the loop or the bottom of that, you know, loop, I guess they say. You see RGB values there. And right now it's 54.2 for red, 56.5 for green, and blue is 76.4. And I want to point out if you take the gander over there, 
at the um, histogram, you could see that the values are kind of similar over there. They're slightly different, but, but kind of similar. Now, the idea here, you can see at the top, it says pick a target neutral. That basically means uh, uh, t uh, click somewhere in your image that in real life shouldn't have any color in it. It should be white, gray, or black. Now, unfortunately, if you just click on anything that's white, gray, or black, it's not going to give you a perfect white balance. What you really need to find is something that is 18% gray, like a gray card in real life. So if, if I had a gray card in this scene, I could click on that, and theoretically, I would get a perfect white balance adjustment. Now, unfortunately, there isn't all gray card in the scene, an 18% gray card. So what can you do? Well, what you need to do is look at those RGB values at the bottom of that loop and try to find them, try to get as close to 46 on all three numbers. If I put this over a perfect, like an expensive gray card, a really good gray card in good lighting, it should say red value 46, green value 46, blue value 46. That's what it should say. So what you need to do is in the scene, find similar numbers. Now here we have red 47.5, green 47.4, blue 54.2. So you could keep moving around. I know there's some gray over on this building way over here. So you, you could see it too, and you could see if you just, it's like showing you pixels almost in that grid. So what you need to do is you sometimes just find something gray in the image and then just tweak it around. And this maybe is the closest I could get, 43.9, 43.8, 49.7, click, just click and see what it does, you, does for you. Now, because we're not auto dismissing the tool, I could still move around and try to find somewhere. There's gray on this building over here. And I wouldn't get, you know, too worried about it if you can't get it to 46, 46, 46, because I doubt you're going to be able to. I've never in the world ever been able to get this to read 46, 46, 46. There's 48, 48.3, and 48.6. Click there. And it didn't change much. So I'm really close. But that's the little trick to using this tool. Think 46, 46, 46, and try to find a somewhere on the image that shows 46, 46, 46 and then click, and then you'll get a good white balance adjustment. I think this actually looks pretty good. There's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. So there's some tips on getting the proper white balance adjustment on an image. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.